Well, welcome to the call, everyone. My name is Dr. Kurt Visnick, and this is the uh, Friday night training call here in the States. It's Saturday morning down in Australia, and uh, welcome to the call. Um, I think we got an exciting call coming up. I think we have some, some good things to share. Um, you know, just really, this call is, is all about you. It's about helping you build your business, helping you find the things that you need uh, to make your business grow. And, uh, and so that's, that's what we're going to do tonight. You know, as I'm uh, waiting for Katie to uh, run down uh, Jason, the new director of marketing at Sizzle, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a few things that, that I, was, I was reading a book this morning, and I, I thought this was, this was interesting. And um, basically, it was 50 Secrets of, of Being Successful. And I'm not going to read all 50 of them to you, but I'm going to read um, just a few, right? And, and uh, so think about these things as I read them. Rich people, they think differently than broke people. Healthy people think different than sick people. Happy people think differently than depressed people. If you're poor, it's not really because you don't have any money, but you really don't have a dream. Money or the thought of money is energy. You can attract it or you can push it away. A powerful vision will pull the world to you. And if your dream's big enough, facts just don't matter anymore. You can do anything. You can watch TV, or you can do something. You can build something for your life. You can be a victim or you can be a victor. One or the other, you can't be both. Poverty is a mindset. Prosperity is a mindset. When people say they're short on money, what they're really short saying is that they're, they're short on ideas. And we shouldn't let other people's beliefs limit what we do. Here's a good one. You can't be wealthy if you take advice from a broke person. The only free cheese in life is that that's found on a mouse trap. Wealth is added by solving problems. And the last one I'm going to read is, you got to let go of who you were to become who you were meant to be. I read those this morning and I thought, you know, I like that. I like, I think it's a, it's a um, great way to start a call. You, you start thinking about the, the, the things that, um, that you do, the people you're talking to. If you're talking to somebody who's unhealthy and you start talking to them about a business, a business opportunity, are you going to get much traction? Probably not. Probably not. If you're talking to somebody who's sick and you say you're in age reversal, this one really made me think this morning. If you're talking to somebody about age reversal and they're sick, while you're busy talking, what are they thinking? They're thinking, Oh my God, why would I want to live another hundred years feeling like I feel right now? And I was thinking that during the call last night when Tom was talking about age reversal when he went and spoke to the um, International Congress on Stem Cells. I thought, huh, how many people just don't even get it. We start talking about age reversal and it just goes right through there from one year to the other year because their brain isn't set to that channel. That channel on age reversal, it's 
the, the airwaves, they're not there. They're not, they're not being received. You know, they don't subscribe to that channel on cable or whatever, however you want to look at it. And, and so when, I, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about these things, I'm thinking, okay, so if you're talking to somebody who's sick, wouldn't it make sense to switch gears, change the channel, and start talking to them about maybe I can help you. Maybe I can, I can help you get rid of that problem. If you're talking to somebody who's depressed, they're not on the right channel. They're not listening to you. They're not listening to you talk about age reversal because they're depressed. They're depressed about something in their life. What can you do to help change that? Help them. If you're talking to somebody who's a little bit short on money, you got to get them to kind of switch the channel a little bit, right? And so I was, I was thinking about those things, and, and uh, you know, earlier in the week, we were talking, a couple of us were talking about, well, what are we going to talk about on, on the call? What are we going to share? And, I, and, and we decided, you know, let's talk a little bit about success. And so go back and re-listen to those, those 20 things that I listed. And think about it. When you're out prospecting to people, when you're out talking to people, think about where are they at? What channel are they on? And try and dial in to the channel that they're on. And I think you're going to have better luck prospecting. So while I'm waiting for uh, Katie here, she still hasn't gotten uh, Jason on. We, we uh, had a last-minute uh, notice that uh, Jason Gao, um, the director of marketing from Sizzle International, uh, was going to jump on the call with us tonight, but maybe he's not available. So, so while we're waiting, I'm just going to keep going on about some of the things that I kind of prepared for the call, some things that I wanted to share and, and, and talk about. Is that, you know, so many times people talk about what are the things that can make you successful? But why don't I share three things that, might be holding you back. If you don't know what's holding you back, how are you going to make the changes? So here's one. The inability to make the main thing the main thing. The inability to make the main thing the main thing. Hmm. Here's a rule. To be successful... You need to set aside time to relax a little bit. You need time to revitalize. You know, this morning I, I was working till about 1 o'clock. I got up at, you know, and started working at 8 o'clock this morning. My phone was ringing. I started working at 8. I worked straight through till 1 without a break. And then I decided to take a little break. And I went for a, went for a walk with my, with my dog. And, and I did a little work on one of my old cars. I just bought a 1937 DeSoto. And I was doing some work on that. But... You got to set aside time to revitalize yourself. But when you get in the game, you got to put that game face on. Like right now, I shut off, you know, my, my uh, ringer on my phone. I, I shut off ringers on different things. And no distractions. No distractions. I've got the windows closed so I don't hear the outside noise. No distractions. A friend of mine, Corey Johnson, I remember when he told me that when he got into um, the network marketing industry, he said that he sat down in his office, he told his wife, he told his kids, he said, he said, now don't bother me. He said, he said, I've got a goal. This is what I got to do for the next two weeks. I'm going to lock myself in my office and I'm going to come out to get food. I'm going to take, come out to, you know, do this, go to the bathroom, whatever, but I'm going to be locked in this room. And I, I always remember him saying that. You got to put yourself in the game, and when, it's, when, when, when you're working, it's work time, no distractions. And a lot of the busiest people that I know, they're too busy because they aren't doing that. They're, they're constantly doing other things, and, and they, they really never reach that high level of success because they're busy all day. They're busy reacting to every bell. They hear the 
the uh, notification. Oh, they got a new text message. They got to go listen to that. They got to go read that. Oh, they got a new tweet. Oh, somebody commented on their post on Facebook, right? They're constantly sending text messages. I mean, you know who I'm talking about. You've seen those people. You've hung out with them. You go out for dinner, and you're trying to have a conversation, but they're busy reading the screen. They're busy texting somebody or doing something like that, right? And they're always tending to other people's emergencies, and so here's what I'm going to tell you is that if you really, truly want to be successful, you got to really block off on your calendar. When it's time to take a vacation, it's time to take a vacation. You're unavailable. You got to focus on your activity and, and when it's time to work. And there's millions of opportunities out there. I mean, you can look anywhere and you can find a ton of opportunities. But I'll tell you. If you really want to, if you really want to build something and, and you want to do it the right way and you don't want to have kind of that, I'm going to say that, that risk of, of failure, find something where you can solve problems, where you can add value and always be looking for future opportunity. You know, a lot of people, they see 300 things that they can do to, to become wealthy. And so what do they do? They don't just pick one or two. They jump into all 300 activities at the same time. They, they believe in that rule of diversification, but they really don't focus on any one thing. And so what happens is they never really get successful at anything. And really it's a mistake because they become too distracted. And so I tell people, like I tell my kids, get laser focused. Figure out what you want to do and get laser focused. My son this morning, he sends me a, a video of him um, playing the piano in his office. He's got his guitar there. He's got his piano there. And so he takes a break every so often, and he'll sing a song. And, and uh, you know, and I said, you just don't know how to have fun, you know. But he, uh, when he puts his mind to what he's doing, when it's time to work, holy cow, I mean, that wor he works. Um, all my boys are that way. They, they just know how to, to focus when it's, time to, when it's time to focus. And so, again, you need to make the main thing the main thing. And what is the main thing? Well, I'm going to tell you the main thing is focusing on the needs of your customers, focusing on the needs of your business partners, focusing on the needs of your customers, your clients your business builders. Don't focus on making more money. That'll happen. Focus on adding value to your, to your um, uh, customers and your distributors and, and, and that. So, so again, make the main thing the main thing. And then the second thing that I, I wrote down, I, made, I took some notes as I was, I was reading this morning. I was trying to write, it, write this out in a way that, that I could put it into a call like we're doing. A lot of people, they, they try to become successful, but they live in a poverty attitude. And they're always thinking broke. They're always thinking about being broke. And... They're, they're never looking for that, that window of opportunity. You know, I've noticed that successful people, when I'm talking to somebody who's successful, they're always looking for ways to expand their opportunity. They're looking for ways of, of making that window bigger all the time. And so as I was reading this morning, you know, why, don't, why doesn't everybody do that? Well, a lot of people, they have these fears. They have these fears. I had somebody tell me the other day, they said, well, you know, I was talking to them about getting into, into sizzle. And I said, you know, I mean, the possibility is here that you can make a lot of money. You can make a thousand dollars. You can make $10,000, uh, $100,000. I mean, holy cow. I mean, we know people in, in the network marketing industry who have made millions, billions of dollars. But the comment made was, yeah, but what if I lose that $100 that it costs me to get started, right? 
poverty attitude. They're thinking about the fear of losing the hundred dollars versus the possibility of what if this really works? What if it works? And then they have this fear of other people's opinions. They value other people's beliefs. They put other people's beliefs and they allow that to restrain them in what they're doing. And you just don't want to do that. And I've heard some people say that, uh, you know, you just take little baby steps, just little itsy bitsy baby steps, and, and, and that'll help you get there to success. But, you know, my thought on it is, is that, and I know some of you are with me on this, is that <laughs> you got to run, baby. You got to sprint. You got to jump in. Don't test the water. You just got to take the leap because this, you want to do it. You want to, you want to, you want to get this thing going. And then when you get your new people going, you got to get those people going and, and you want to teach them the same thing. Sprint, run. Because it's the, it's the, it's the speed of the leader that's going to set the pace for the rest of the people on your team. It's going to be your speed that's going to set that pace. And then the third thing, and I think this is, this is so important, is that a lot of people, they have this inability to, to really demonstrate value. And I'm not talking about value of the company, the value of the product, value of you and so you've done the work and um, you're good at what you do you've paid the dues you've uh, learned your lesson you know you've learned all the lessons and uh, you've learned all the lessons and you followed the right path, you found something that you love doing, you're good at it, but you're just not succeeding. And so, you know, the world's changed. I mean, in the past, probably 100 years ago, you could come up with a, with a new mouse trap, and, and the world come running to you. Isn't that what the saying, the saying is? Is that you build a, invent a new mouse trap, a better mouse trap, and the world will come knocking your doors down. Well, I'll tell you what, in today's world, because of all the social media, because of all the cable channels, because of all the radio stations, there's a lot of interference going on. And I'll tell you, the person that's going to be the most successful is the guy that advertises and shows lots of dead mice. When he shows pictures of dead mice, he's going to, he's going to be able to be more successful than the guy that invented the best mouse trap. And nobody can articulate your value better than you can. So in reality, you have a value and you just need to demonstrate it. You need, you need to promote it, right? And uh, Katie and a few of us are, are busy listening to some of Eric Worre's training and he talks about the difference between advertising and marketing and promoting. And you need to really promote yourself in a compelling way and, and learn how to do that. So I think a big mistake that people make is they, when we say demonstrate your value, I think they think cost, cost. They start talking about the cost. Well, you know, H pill is, you know, here. And if you buy it in a seven pack, it's here. And, and so they, they, they think that's how they demonstrate the value. But really, based on the results that we're getting on the age pill, I talk about the benefit. I talk about the benefit. I talk about, about that because that's, gonna, that's my value is the benefit. It's not, the, it's not the cost, it's not the $50, the $60, whatever it happens to cost. The value is what it can do for you. I mean, go listen to the, the testimonial calls that we do. Go listen to the testimonial call next week, next, next week on our call, 
Um, we're going to have some great testimonials again that we'll be sharing. And I mean, you'll you'll hear the value of that product. But learn how to demonstrate your own value. What can you add to somebody else? What can you add to to what they're doing? Um, I'm looking here. I just want to see if um, Jason has grown, joined us. I'm going to unmute everybody just for a second. That's the things that I had written down as far as talking about success for. Hang on one second. I'm going to unmute everybody. Hang on. Actually, Jason, if you're on the call, Jason and Gal, if you would like to just hit star six and unmute yourself. Are you on the call with us, Jason? I see a couple people that I don't recognize on the call. Are you there? You are not, or you're not answering. Anyhow, um, Katie, I'm going to unmute you and uh, kind of, you know, you've been reading a lot of the the things and doing some training with Eric Worry and and. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your thoughts on, on, on goal setting and, and reaching your goals, becoming successful. Hi, Kurt. Can you hear me? I do. Great. Um, Kurt, I thought it might be really beneficial for everyone. You did a great story in the most recent newsletter that you sent out about goal setting. So I guess I'll touch on a little bit of that, and then perhaps you could share some of that story because it was pretty incredible really so you know with uh, goal setting there's some statistics around it and uh, actually I did mention the statistic and you said it was much higher that if you write your goals down and have them written on paper your success rate or your the likelihood of you reaching those goals goes up significantly uh, I thought it was around 44 percent increased chance of hitting those goals but you said it was actually much higher it was about 70 wasn't it about 70% is what they actually say is if you write your goals down, your, your, your chance of being successful at reaching your goals is 70% higher. If you only think of your, of your, of your goal, if, you, if you, you say, oh, I don't have to write it down, I'll just think about it. If you only think about it, it only increases your chances by 30%. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. interesting? Yeah, it's fascinating. And so in the newsletter, you shared the story about your goals and that you had them written down. And there was one that was really good about writing the number of patients on the door. Do you want to share that story? I sure will. And, and uh, yeah, so, you know, one of the things that I did in my clinic was I, I've always been um, – self-motivated. I've always motivated myself to get things done. And, and, uh, I don't know why that's just who I am. And, uh, and so what, what I came up with was this idea of, of really kind of the secret in, in a sort of a way, if you've ever read the book, the secret, or you listen to the, the presentation called the secret, it's kind of on the lines of that. And, and what I, what I did is, is I tried to incorporate, how do I get people participating in my goal? How do I get them to help them help have them reach my goal? Well, in a lot of cases, how are they going to help you if they don't even know what it is? And so what I decided to do is I just took plain old paper plates, actually, Katie, it was paper plates um, and white paper plates. And let's say that I had a goal of seeing 20 new patients for the month of September. I would write the number 20 on the paper plate and I'd hang it on uh, the door, on the back side of the door. And I hung it on the back side of the door in every room in the office. And I wouldn't say anything about it. I'd just be treating my patients. And, and inevitably, somebody would say to me, they'd say, they'd say hey, Dot, what's, that, what's the idea of the number 20 there? And, and I, I'd tell them, I said, well, you know, that's my goal this month. That's how many new patients that, uh, that I'd like to have in the clinic. That's how many new people that I feel I can adequately take care of. And, and you got to put a value on it again. So that's how many people I feel I can adequately take care of this month. I can add to my current patient base. Because if I see more than that, 
I'm going to be taking away some of the time that I need with my other patients. And, and, um, and then when I, when, when, you know, and, and, and I might ask, I might say, you know, Katie, do you know anybody that lives locally that would like to uh, get healthier? And I'd, I'd say, you know, here's a couple of my business cards. Would you, would you share this with people? And they would, um, they would share that with other people. And, and, uh, and they refer to me because they're trying to help me hit my goal. And then they'd come in the next time and they'd look on the wall and they'd say, Oh, you cross it off. And now it's down to like, say 15. And so I'd cross it off and put 19. Then I'd cross it off and put 18, cross it off, put 17, 16. And it got down to 15 and, they, and, and they'd come back in and they'd say, wow, you're down to 15. And, and, you know, and, or maybe I got down to the last part of the month and, and I had, there was still the number three written up there. And, uh, and, and people would say, oh, you're down to three. Can I, can I do anything to help? And people would want to participate because they want to help you reach your goals if your goal is for the right reason. So anyhow, that, that was my story, Katie, and, and it really worked. And, and uh, you know, and, and it's crazy. I would take it in my, in my office. I would block out certain time to make it so that people could – could come in, new patients could refer. So let's say that I, I left nine o'clock in the morning and I left um, five o'clock in the evening open because I always thought I want to start my day with a new patient. I want to end my day with a new patient. So I would leave a, a block of time open every day for a new patient in the morning, new patient at the end of the day. And, and I, would, I would get there early. And, and uh, I'll tell you, when I did that, typically I would have those two new patients every single day every time I did that, because the world gives you what you want. It gives you what you need if you provide a way and if you're doing it for the right reason. Yeah, that's incredible. It makes me think, aside from doing, writing down your goals uh, on a piece of paper, I had, there was a time in my life when it was extremely difficult and I was really unwell and I wasn't sure how I was going to get better again. And and for those of you who are on the call who've listened to the Sizzle Doctor Clinic call uh, on Alzheimer's, you can hear my story and it probably makes sense why I became so unwell because of what we went through. But anyway, I not only did I write my goals down at that time, uh, I had this vision of wanting to be really fit and healthy. And, you know, I only just realized it now why we're on this call, so I thought I'd share it. So what I did is I actually made a mind movie and I used PowerPoint, which many of you may be familiar with, which is a, a program that you can create a presentation with. And I did some slides and I put pictures of how um, I imagined I wanted myself to be. And so I put these pictures of, you know, a female being quite active and uh, a female in the gym doing uh, squats and weights and, uh, and just happy things of where I wanted to be that I, you know, could imagine even though I was really unwell. And I used to watch that movie every day over and over again. And I even put music to it to kind of add more emotion to it. And the one thing that I remember that really jumps out in my mind that I had set for myself was that I would be going to the gym and training. And so it's really interesting because now that I look back, not only do I go to the gym um, and train and I got through that time and I, I, do, I really do feel that movie, that mind movie helped and having that visualization. But uh, not, not only did I make it through, I even, you know, uh, entered a couple of fitness competitions for over 40s and I would never have imagined to have done that and I'm pretty sure, in fact, I'm certain that it was a, probably a result of actually watching that mind movie over and over and over again. So it's really incredible how it can work and I know I've spoken to um, some of my team members and they go that one step further. Not only do they write their goals down, they do the, the visualization and the mind movie. So they imagine themselves doing uh, and achieving the things they want to, but actually feeling the feeling of it. You bet. You know, Katie, that, uh, that brings me, I mean, you know how, how one story leads you to another one. And just adding to that, you know, I'm into cars, you know, I'm into cars. And I remember when I, uh, when I quit smoking, when I decided I was going to quit smoking cigarettes, I knew I was going to buy myself a convertible. I didn't know what I was going to buy and, and, but I, what I did is I went out and I test drove all these different cars. I roared the engine, I revved it up so I could hear it. 
I got behind the wheel so I could feel it. I put the top down so I could feel the wind blowing through my hair. And because that's what you need to do to visualize it. So you have to go that one step. If you want to, if you want to move to a different zip code, if you want to improve where you live, go to that other zip code and go to the different open houses in those homes and look at the homes and just kind of decide, oh man, this is where I want to live. This is the kind of a house that I want to live in. That's the kind of car. Get behind the wheel of a, of a car. Don't, you know, don't just jump in somebody's car, go, go to a dealership or one that's for sale. But um, do those sorts of things because now you can feel it, you can taste it, you can smell it. And just like Katie said, here she is. She never, in her wildest dreams, would have, would have thought of herself being up on stage doing bodybuilding contests. And here she is um, over the age of 40 uh, doing that. Crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. Anyhow, you know, Andrew, I mean, uh, Katie, I'm going to let you uh, finish the call. Let's, uh, let's, uh, it's a little bit past the bottom of the hour. If you want to, if you want to close it out and uh, everyone, thanks for being here. And I know uh, Jason was supposed to be with us today. I'm sure something came up at corporate um, that he couldn't be here. We'll get him back on. Uh, hopefully we can get him on next week. Next week, of course, is going to be our, our testimonial call. So if you, if you have any testimonials yourself, your family, somebody that you know, Get a hold of me or Katie or, or someone and let us know that you've got a great testimonial that you want to share and uh, and and let's get that let's get that recorded so we can help the rest of the world understand how great these products are. So Katie, I'll let you close out the call. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Kurt. And for those of you on the call in my team, just to let you know we've got a, a meeting, a webinar at eleven o'clock today on social media. So please jump on if you're available. So I want to thank everyone for jumping on the call. Uh, tonight, I hope you've got some gold nuggets in there and something came into your mind that you found valuable or that you could apply in your life. So, you know, I really encourage you to write down your goals if you haven't already done so, and it does make a massive difference. All right, well, have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and we'll hear you on the call next week. Thank you.